Before I start, I will admit that this video kind of jumps around quite a bit. It goes back and forth between the topics and it's not as linear as I would have liked, but I'm still kind of learning how to put these videos together and the best format. And I'm going to be a little bit more organized in the future and try to improve uh, with each video going forward. So here we go. Well, I'm aware it has been like since last May, I think, that I recorded the last Countess video. Um, so I'm going to go through the photos I have. And I think where we left off was I had just finished the Grand Peniers and, or at least almost finished it. I actually ended up adding a ruffle uh, after taking this photo. Um, I think I'd spoken about that. We had talked about materials. I was still waiting on materials to get in, especially like that two-tone polyester silk from England, which ended up being amazing. And I said, I talked about how I wanted to start the corset and I still needed to get the pattern. So a lot has happened since. The next thing I worked on was a lot of patterning. I have the situation where my main fabric is in a bunch of different pieces, uh, like two yards, two yards, three yards, and four yards. And so since the, the skirts aren't the most complicated silhouettes, I knew that I was probably going to have to make my own pattern just to fit the crazy amount of pieces I had for the main fabric. So I did that and I do this crazy kind of thing. Not crazy, but probably more than most people do. Uh, I started doing this back when I did commissions and I had like really expensive fabric that I didn't want to mess up because then it would be, you know, at my own cost to replace it. Or sometimes, you know, I was in a situation where uh, it couldn't be replaced. It was the last of a bolt and no one else had it and that was it. So my anxiety likes me to plan a little bit more. And what I would do was I would go into Photoshop and I would take the dimensions of the fabric and I would take, I would measure the pattern um, and get the basic dimensions and then put, uh, make sure everything was to scale. Uh, the pattern pieces were to scale to the fabric pieces. And I would make these digital pieces so I could move them around and visually see on the fabric. So where could I fit this? Uh, is this even going to work? How can I get the most out of this fabric? So you can see here, I have for the, the base for the lace, which goes under the main skirt, um, I have two yards of fabric and uh, I've measured my pieces that can fit on that. And then I know that I only need to order two yards or if it was a rare fabric and I only had two yards of it, and then it's all planned out. For the actual skirt pattern, I did look at a commercial pattern that had a similar skirt, but then for my own needs, because I have fabric in so many different pieces, I did change things quite a bit. Uh, I combined the two front pieces together, I removed some of the fullness of the other ones, uh, and just made my own thing there. So, And then in Photoshop, I plotted out the front pieces, and I just kind of eyeballed where I was going to put the different scallops. I kind of just divided by five to make sure that they were all even. Uh, and then just just plotted them out like that. I don't have an actual pattern yet for that, so I'll have to actually make that pattern. Of course you have to keep in, keep in mind nap and direction of things. So the fabrics that I'm using right now are just plain, like the underskirt fabric. Not only is it plain, but it's not gonna be seen. It's gonna be covered with a bunch of lace. So it doesn't really matter what direction it's going as long as it's, you know, on the correct grain. So having pieces flipped upside down, but this is a great technique too. If you do have to pay attention to the nap of fabric or the pattern of a fabric, you can, and the pieces can only go a certain way and you can still arrange them and see if they're gonna fit. I do this on a lot of costumes. I did it on, the Padme cape because that fabric I had, that perfect fabric, was the last of the fabric. So uh, if I messed up, it was, I did mess up actually. I messed up horribly, but I fixed it and it was my own costume. So it wasn't the biggest deal. Would have been much more stressful if it was like a client costume or something, uh, which is why I don't do that anymore. But I was trying to follow the the pattern in the photos that I saw uh, from the, the West End gown and they, there's a couple more photos online that kind of show the understructure. 
of the Countess costume, um, even though I'm going for like the Vegas version. Uh, and there's a like a quilted overskirt that goes over the panniers. This is to kind of provide an extra layer so you don't see the bones. If you just put the main skirt fabric over there, you might see the bones um, and it just provides a nice, nice smooth um, foundation for it. And I just patterned, you can see here, I just patterned something out and I, I wanted really minimal gathers at the waist so it wasn't bulky, but I achieved that with a muslin and when I went to cut out, I'm getting ahead of myself, but when I went to cut out the pattern and put it together, I had a lot more excess fabric at the top of the waist, but I just went with it. I mean, it's going to be bulky anyway. I don't know. I could always redo it later if it doesn't work out, but I'm just going to keep it the way it is, see if it works out and we'll go from there. But this was my pattern. And then what I did was I needed to order the quilted fabric. Uh, and obviously I wanted to keep it under as much budget as possible. So I tried to see how many uh, pieces I could fit in and how much yardage I was gonna need. And unfortunately I needed five yards of this stuff. This, this costume is really, I mean, all phantom costumes are money pits. But this one is like exceptionally a money pit. I had to just keep ordering stuff and ordering stuff, you know, and uh, I hate spending money, but um, I, I try to be conservative and find coupons and, you know, sales and stuff and order enough to get free shipping, any little thing I can do, you know, to kind of budget things out. But I had to order five yards of this fabric. And I was also planning out the other skirt pieces too, because I think at the time of the last video, I had just mentioned that I was going to, you know, finagle the pattern because I had so many different yardage lengths and it cut into, you know, multiple different lengths. I was worried about having enough for the skirt, but I think it's going to be totally fine. Uh, and I did, I did estimate the, I did estimate how much I was going to need. So I don't have pictures of this, but I... I had to have, this was a while ago, it's hard to remember. I, I must have patterned or tested this out with muslin because I don't think I would have made a, a, a digital mock-up like this without doing that. But And this skirt's really a simple pattern and I hope it works. Um, and this is what I came up with. So there's uh, basically a really long piece for both the, both back pieces that wrap around to the side. So the left rear, the right rear, and then the front piece looks like this when it's not cut, and then it will have these scallops that, that are seen here. If you look at this mock-up here, you can see that the, the front's kind of scalloped and it kind of gives you indications of where the lace is gonna go and the decorations. So here are all the pieces I have of fabric my four yard, three yard, two yard, and two yard pieces. Uh, you can see three of those pieces are taken up just for the skirt. And then I've saved a two yard piece, which should be plenty for the bodice. So even if I mess up or something, I'll still have a little bit extra. I hope that works out because I'm thinking this is like a total of what, eight yards in a skirt. I think that should do the trick. I guess if it doesn't, I could always take anything left over, like that little piece here, seen on the, the left rear skirt piece. You know, I could insert that into the back center to extend it or something. There's, there's a little bit of wiggle room. Not only is this good for if you have a budget, you need to know how many yards to order for something. And I should say, like, let's say you made your own pattern, so you don't have a pattern that actually says you need four yards for this. So it's good for planning for that. It's good for your budget. It's good for if you have an irreplaceable fabric, like I have, I can't really replace this fabric. And it's good for being less wasteful. So it's all plotted out and you're a little bit more sustainable. Or if your fabric is in a million different pieces like mine, it helps you plan it out to see, is this doable? So if you have a, something like a cape that requires very large pieces of fabric, it could kind of tell you like, oh, I can accomplish this or no, this is never gonna work or I need to find a different way. I don't know if there's an actual program out there that does that, like a CAD program, but yeah, I just use dinky like Photoshop elements and make sure um, I'm paying attention. My scale is in inches and I'm paying attention. I tried to take more videos this time around too, at least when I was working on the pannier and the cover and everything, um, because I haven't taken videos recently, I just realized. 
here, you know, I was marking all the different layers for the, the ruffles. So I cut out a lot. Again, it was unnecessary to do the ruffle at the bottom, but I thought it might hide that. It might hide the, the bottom bone a little bit better and just give the skirt, you know, even more support and fluff. Plus it was pretty. And so I cut all those strips, attached all the lace. Oh yeah, surged all the edges, attached all the lace, ruffled them all. Yeah, I recorded a lot of different videos when I was doing these things because I wanted these vi videos to be as good as they could be in showing stuff. But then I just realized with the corset, I really didn't record a lot of stuff with the corset. Only took photos, probably because I was so frustrated. I knew the corset would be complicated, but it was even more complicated than I had imagined. So I think I was just working, 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 and I didn't didn't really stop to think about it but um so enjoy these videos while I have them you know these little time lapse videos you know it's I have some photos of it here's what it looks like once it was finally stitched on and some pretty photos of the lace this is just really cheap lace I got off of Amazon like a big old bolt of it oh yeah so I had ordered that sample of the the taffeta the polyester taffeta that was two-tone from England and I was waiting on the sample. So much time has passed. I have since got the sample, ordered the fabric, received the fabric in, and it's been sitting on my shawl for months. Here's the sample again of the taffeta and I'm just really happy with it because I just love ombre fabrics and two-tone fabrics are like my favorite things to incorporate or favorite details on a costume. So I kind of knew I had to have that two-tone going on that goes underneath the lace. And it's silly because it's literally underneath silver lace and you can barely see it. You can barely see the effect, but it's, it adds so much to it, to me, for the costume, uh, that it was just an important detail I wanted to have. So um, I was incredibly impressed with the sample that they sent me and was really excited because I thought I was going to have to spend a lot more on this fabric, but it was a very good price point. Although I did only buy two yards because I think that's all I'm going to need. And it's just difficult because it's like, I would really like three yards just in case. But all this stuff adds up. So you can just purchase things willy-nilly. But especially when you make a quick decision too. Like, so I made the decision to buy this lace. I spoke about it in the last video. And I was going to cut it and edge it a certain way because it was this lace was cheap and it was... Uh, Actually, it's not really lace. It's a fabric. It's like a mesh fabric. And I, I liked the way it draped. I liked the way it looked. But I was going to have to cut a bunch of scallops into it. And since then, I actually ordered a different lace I was looking at. And uh, that's this one. Uh, so what I did after that was I had a muslin pattern. So I had to make an actual paper pattern. Um, or I use this tracing paper for my patterns because uh, I like to have something that you can see through and, and trace over and everything. So this is me Frankensteining pieces of the tracing paper together to get a big enough pattern. And the pattern's only two pieces because the front and the back are the same and then the four side pieces are all made from the same panel or pattern piece. So I pinned all these pieces together and sewed them all together. So I sewed the uh, quilted petticoat on the old machine because this was long before I had it uh, and this is what it looks like unfinished you can see there's a lot more gathers than I thought and this is thick fabric so it's a concern you know that there's gonna be a lot of thickness there but I don't know I, I don't have a lot of experience with 18th century costumes I've done the one I've done the Nancy Tremaine costume which was great but that didn't have like a corset underneath it was a corseted bodice it had you know small panniers that I made on the side but that was actually for a customer and I didn't really like wear it or spend time in it so it's kind of just I'm just gonna have to go and once I make the bodice I'll put it all on and see if it's too thick or not so yeah I also padded out the dress form which was depressing um you know I would much rather look like this dress form right here I used to look like that dress form that used to be my size and now it's not anymore. Um, and maybe I'll get down to that size. But I kept waiting and waiting and trying and trying. And uh, it wasn't happening. So I just kept moving forward with the costume at the regular size. I also needed... So that two-tone fabric is w going to be cut in strips. And it's going to go under the silver lace. So it's like the underlay for the silver lace. 
that I needed something to attach both of those layers to. And since that's not going to be seen, not really, I mean, if you twirled in the skirt, you might see a peek of it. Um, I went to Joanne's and got like the cheapest fabric I could for the base. So this is what I got. It's not a matching color, but again, you're not going to see it. So that's what I picked. I got two yards of that. And here's my stack of fabric. Uh, and you can see I have two of those silver laces in there. So that lace did come in and I'll have to put a photo up there. Both fabrics are good. You can kind of tell the, the second fabric that I chose is a little bit more rich and more detailed. And I feel like from far away, it has a better effect with like looking at it with texture. From far away, the other mesh one kind of just looks plain, but we'll see if I can incorporate both somehow. So I did get the pattern from Red Threaded and I chose the wrong size or I chose it when I was a different size and I changed sizes. I don't know what was going on. I eventually had to order a second different sized pattern and I actually Frankenstein the two together. The first pattern I started, I hadn't done corsets in a while. So I thought just making the, the, the stomacher, the center panel would be a good place to start. I didn't have all my boning. I had some left over, so I had enough for that. And that turned out, that was really easy. I liked working with the, you know, the English Coutille and I was like, wow, you know, I wish I could have afforded this before to use in everything. Obviously you just, you just can't always afford the good stuff, but I made a mock-up of the corset and this is really difficult because unless you have, unless you've almost like completed the whole damn corset with all the channels and everything and the boning in, your mock-up is not going to look good. Okay. It's just basic for fitting. I did not like that. There was way too much of a gap in the front and this is on a mannequin. Yeah. It just looks awful, but I guess I'm going to show you anyway. No, actually I'm not. It's so awful. I don't, I won't want to show it on this video. Uh, <laughs> regardless, it did not fit well. I ordered a pattern that was not large enough. I don't know what I did, but the pattern was wrong. And, uh, you know, after cutting an entire mock-up out and sewing it and it being wrong, you're just, you're like, Ugh. so I, I shelved that for a while, quite a while. I also came across a great new tool and I made a video about it. So I'm not going to talk too much here because my video is going to be insanely long. There, if you look in my YouTube account, you'll see a, ve a very quick and brief, nice brief video uh, about this tool. And it's a drill bit that's for drilling holes from the company Sailrite. And it drills through so many layers of fabric and it creates a perfect hole for the for grommets and eyelets and stuff. And oh, it, I cannot explain to you how amazing this tool was. I just recently used it. It had just been sitting there for a while until I got to the point where I was putting the grommets on the final corset and something that would have taken me like one to two hours to do by hand, cutting through all those layers, trying to get it perfect, trimming things. It would still have never been perfect. I put these grommets in my corset in 10 minutes, in ten minutes. five minutes per side, drilled all the holes, uh, got all the grommets in, you know, hammered them in done. I mean, like it was, and they looked perfect because they were perfectly drilled. You weren't pulling on threads and trying to cut through all the thicknesses because essentially you're going through four layers of that couture and that's a lot to cut through, especially when you don't have like super sharp, nice scissors, you know, cause I have cheap scissors. What came next was hellish. Uh, I'm used to Victorian corsets where a lot of the boning just goes in the seams or next to the seam line. There's not a lot of there's some marking, but a lot of things are just like stitch three quarters away from the seam line and there's your channel. You know, you don't really have to mark it. This had to be marked and it had to be very detailed and accurate. Every single piece. There's six pieces total, uh, not including the, the, the stomacher or the middle part. I had to use um, tracing paper and a tracing wheel. More things I had to buy. <laughs> and I had never really used them before the transfer paper because I had always found like different ways of transferring things but for this I really needed it really accurate and so it was time to learn but it's another thing I had to buy again just this thing is just a money pit and it took I came back to this I'd do like a piece 
wait two weeks, do another piece or two, wait a couple weeks. I mean, this was, it's been a while <laughs> since I worked, since I've recorded a video. So this, uh, it was just, it's not the most fun thing, especially when you have to be insanely accurate. So if I got stressed, I would just take a break and, you know, walk away and then come back to it when I wanted to come back to it. Because when you're doing your own projects and you have no deadlines, you can do that. So uh, that's what I did. And since I could probably do this much faster now, but you have to realize when you're doing something for the first time, it's going to take, it can often take a lot longer. So when I finally got all the pieces cut, and all the pieces marked. So that's a total of 12 pieces. Six are marked and the other half are plain because they're the front pieces. I stitched them together. Here's the front, the front pieces and the side pieces stitched together. Then you have the task of stitching all the channels. So I tried to follow the directions really closely, the red threaded directions. And she has a great tip about using stitch witchery a lot to hold things in place. So you don't put them where the channels are, but little tiny pieces of the stitch witchery, you can put in between and it prevents the fabric from, the two layers of fabric from shifting, you know, while you're working on it, if you have it bonded together, as long as it's not hitting that channel, then, you know, you won't have any problem with the boning going in. And that was just kind of genius because I've, you know, always kind of had, if you're not quite perfect with lining and things, don't line up. It can be a nightmare, but that really helped. And it actually helped later too, because she suggests using it on parts of the, the bias binding so it doesn't move, but I'll get to that in a minute. Regardless, I stitched all the channels and that took a while because you have to stitch all these little squares. Um, you can't stitch just, you know, crossing like this so you can't get the horizontal bones in. It just took a while. Now, I do have one criticism of the pattern, and I, it, it states in the pattern what to do, but it's a little bit vague. The instruction, you know, I'm an experienced seamstress, and I seem to have a lot of questions, and I had to really, really think about what the instructions were saying. Yet, you know, on Etsy, on these reviews of the patterns, some people, I don't believe this, by the way, I don't believe it. Some people are like, this was my first time sewing anything, and this was so easy. And I'm like, what? no, <laughs> that's gotta be a lie. Corsets are not easy in any corset, especially this corset. This was the most difficult corset I've ever made. Maybe I just didn't absorb the information correctly, but personally I would have made a few changes. So what happened was I thought this line of the pattern was the seam allowance. I, I've never made tabbed corsets before. Okay. So this was difficult for me and this is why I misunderstood it. I would obviously never make this mistake again. It's like a beginner one-time mistake. I thought this was a seam allowance because this is kind of how seam allowances are shown on patterns. You know, you have the solid edge and the dotted slash seam allowance. If you really think into it, it doesn't make sense because you need to cut way up into the tabs. But I just assumed that the dotted line was where the stitching was going to be and where the bones needed to end. So that's how I measured my boning. All 40, 50 pieces of it. As you can see here, I cut all my boning. I sanded all my boning. I tipped all my boning. And my tipping fluid had gone too thick and I ended up having to research how to thin it out and to go to Home Depot, had to get this weird chemical I've never heard of, pay more money, 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 um, to thin the chemical out, got it to where it tipped all the boning, had issues with the boning. This boning I bought, this company, it's not like other brands. It's something I got off of Etsy and it's a little bit thicker, which is nice, but the coating is not like bonded to the metal. And because of that, the coating likes to come off. And then I was just hoping tipping it would keep it together and it did but it made it like extra extra thick so sometimes some of the bones you can really see the ends poking through that fabric a lot which I don't like so I would just never order this again I contacted the company they said oh this has never happened before with our boning and then I realized so I had 
accidentally ordered some half inch wide boning from them like a month ago and never used it, just kind of shelved it. So I thought, hmm, if this is some crazy defect, then the other boning should be normal, right? <coughs> I got out the other boning and it does the same thing. So that was a total lie. And all of their boning is made that way. And I told them, you know, this is kind of important to note that the coating is not bonded to the metal because a lot of people are going to be disappointed in that. And you can get around it and it's not like the biggest deal, but I would have liked to have known that before because I wouldn't have purchased it because I knew that I would have had an issue with it. So it's just not... In the 15 years I've been buying boning from lots of different companies, I've never experienced this type. So I don't know, I guess it's just a different manufacturer that might do things cheaper. They offered me a refund. I don't know if it's because I caught them on their lie because I was like, well, you kind of lied to me because your other boning is exactly the same thing. I, they, I didn't use the half inch boning and I had an extra roll of the quarter inch boning. They said I could send it back for a refund so I did, and I'm still waiting on the refund. So when I didn't know about the seam line, any of you that follow me on Instagram probably saw my insane crisis. I had like 15 <laughs> posts on the Instagram story like, I think it's this way, but it can't be this way. It has to be this way. But am I crazy? Because wouldn't the pattern be marked that way? And I was just going like, you know, my anxiety was just shooting everywhere. Because I was hoping that someone would respond to me help me out. But I, I asked, I emailed Red Threaded and I just asked, is this the line I cut? And is this, you know, and she got back to me and said, yes. Yeah. So I realized I, that the line, the dotted line that I'm so used to being a seam allowance line was actually the cutting line, the edge line, the, the, the binding would be going a quarter inch inwards, which meant all my boning was too long. And I guess that's better than all your boning being too short because all you need to do is cut and retip it. But I had to cut and retip like every single bone. So my criticism with the pattern is that I just wish there was a seam line there. So you know what? Or not even a seam line. Just just have a little bit of text on there that says edge or cutting line or just, just something piece of text on there that says that that just gives a little bit more context I think it would solve you know a lot of issues and just and just help maybe maybe I just overthink it but as you can see here what I mean is this blue line that I drew is actually the seam line the dotted line is your what you're going to trim and in some cases this only meant like a quarter of an inch needed to be cut off but it still needed to be recut off and tipped and in other cases this meant a variation of almost an inch like when you get up high into the the really weird angles it meant that I was gonna have to cut a lot off so I remeasured all the boning channels created a new diagram here and I tried to save whatever I could so I think about 10 12 bones were similar you know I could repurpose them take them out of this channel use them in the other channel but I still had about 40 some that I had to cut and retip Resand, retip. It was, <laughs> it was a lot of work. Once I got that done though, I practiced. So this machine tabbed binding was really difficult. And it is really difficult for everyone. That's kind of, it's not like, oh, it was difficult for me. No, it's, it's, it's difficult for most people. Any posts I've read, especially like with these, this pattern's red threaded. And if you look at like her corset work, the the binding is always immaculate. And I was, I was always like, I wish I could do that. And I know that's probably so hard. And I've just never had a costume that has used anything like that. So when this finally came up, I thought, oh, this is going to be something I should probably practice beforehand. And I, my practice attempts were really crappy until my fourth one. I practiced the back tabs because they looked the most severe and the most skinny, most difficult. So I picked the most difficult one to try and get good at because then everything else should be easy, right? And it took me four attempts and I was really happy with my fourth attempt. I felt confident enough to go back on to the actual finished garment and do it. And they, they didn't turn out as clean as my practice ones. 
they're not terrible. They're okay. But I was just, I would be lying if I said I wasn't disappointed. I wanted them to be more perfect. Uh, it was good enough. It wasn't like it was bad where I needed to redo it or anything like that. So uh, I just tried to live with it and maybe the next one will be better. After that, so I had all the, got the straps done. I put two of the grommets in backwards where the straps go. What are you going to do? You can't take the grommet out and redo it. You'll just ruin the whole, you'll ruin the entire panel. So you just got to look. And I don't have a grommet press or anything. I do it, you know, with, with a hammer, even though I should be using a mallet. I don't have one because I don't want to buy one. Uh, but yeah, five minutes per side. It was done. Cleanest grommets I've ever done. Strongest grommets I've ever done because they're not, you know, pulling it, trying to get all those pieces and everything. So I have finished pictures of the corset there. After the corset was complete, I also altered my chemise. And this was something I bought because this thing had four undergarments and I had to make three of them. So if there was one I could buy, I wasn't going to waste the time and money. It would have cost me more to make this from scratch, to buy the fabric and make it and all the materials and then to just buy this piece. So I bought it from Torrid. I don't know if they sell them anymore because their stuff just sells really fast and they don't seem to restock it ever. But it was from their Outlander line, which is kind of cool, you know, because I like that show and I like to, you know, I want to make Outlander costumes too. So it's kind of fun that the chemise, you know, is from that line. But the, it was actually a nightgown. And what I did was I chopped the long arms off and then I took the lace off of those cuffs and put it around the edge of the sleeve, just because I thought it looked pretty. And I will tell you a secret, the sleeves are not even because I just hacked them off and made it. It's comfortable, it works, I didn't have to make it. I lied and said I was finished with all the underpinnings, but actually the, the quilted petticoat needs a little bit more work. More specifically, it needs hemmed. So what I've done so far is I put elastic in the waistband and I stitched in um, a zipper for the side closure and now it just needs hemmed and I think I'm gonna put like I know I have leftover horsehair braid so I might just throw that into hem into the hem to make it stiffer even though the the petticoat needs hemmed I'll get to that and I might start also working on the skirt and then I found a pattern that I thought was perfect for the bodice because I don't really have anything like it again I have a lot of Victorian patterns and any of the 18th century patterns I have have the, you know, V panel in the front. But this one's kind of just plain. It was so similar to the base of the Countess gown. Plus, I do want to make some more, I, I want to make some Outlander costumes and this pattern would also work for those. It just seems like such a good basic pattern that I thought, you know what, it's going to be worth it to order it. So it's another like... 20 something dollars, but getting a good pattern rather than just the, the commercial patterns that don't always work for my body type, it'll, I'll be able to use it multiple times, which, you know, is good bang for your buck. So that is on its way to me. So the next steps will be working on the skirt, a, a mock-up of the bodice. And I'd also like to get started on some of the embellishments. I have not ordered the silver lace yet, and I'm getting kind of worried that it might, the one I want is going to sell out because I waited like nine months to make the decision. So what I really need to do actually, like the next step is to create the underskirt and do a little mock-up of those horizontal layers of lace so I can see exactly how much silver lace I need and order that next. Cause that's gonna be like one of the final big expenses. Uh, yeah, that is, that's where I'm at in the costume. And you know, this, this video might be broken up into two different videos because I've been talking for like an hour. No one wants to watch a video that long. But if you are, you know, weird like me and you do like to watch videos that long or you do like these videos, it's always a good idea to let me know that for free by just liking the video. Even leaving a comment is nice, you know, it's totally easy. Feedback uh, is, you know, the only way I know that people still want to see these videos. So that's why I will still make them. You know, if I don't get a lot of response, then it's like, eh, okay, no one, you know, I try to, I don't want to waste my time doing it if people don't like them, so. I'm going to be real with y'all. I almost did not finish editing this video because it took me about 
almost six hours over a couple days at just editing out all the ums and adding all the photos in and the video clips. It just, it took a long time to do. Uh, if you feel so inclined and you want to donate like a dollar or five dollars or anything, you know, to help me, you know, make these videos or put towards the costume, I have a link in the description too. I don't expect it and I'm always surprised when I get it. You know, it's hard times right now and I already feel guilty for kind of working on this project because it's like, I'm someone who thinks they should pinch every penny and save money, but you also have to do creative things in life and make, you know, make it valuable and stuff like that. So if you want to help and contribute for making this costume, you, know, you can, I have a link down there. And uh, I imagine there's going to be at least two more videos on this because I have quite a lot more to cover as this project goes because there's going to be the whole you know creating the whole base structure and then we have all those different embellishments. I didn't do videos with the corset but I can definitely try to do more videos with the embellishments so maybe even almost tutorial-ish you know how I make the, the flowers or just videos of them being sewn by hand um, or, you know, uh, uh, time lapses. I, I love t seeing time lapses myself. So you can let me know that in the comments too, but there's gonna be quite a lot more content on this costume if people want it. So let me know and uh, thanks for watching and have a good day.